more than 21 people a day die from lack of organ transplants. Hello, my name is Philip Dotson, and I'd like to talk to you about organ donation. The topic came up between me and my friends not so long ago when it was time for our driver's license renewals, and on every state-issued driver's license, it's a spot asking if you want to be an organ donor. I've always said yes, as I feel can't take them with me. But a few of my friends were on the fence about it. Upon further inquiry, they gave me reasons like, did you know what they can take from you? They can take whatever they want. Or, did you know that most hospitals don't try so hard to save you if you're an organ donor? That way they can get more money. I even remember a time I had a conversation with a conspiracy theorist, and they said that the rich use the donor list to find matches for themselves, and then pay to have the donor filled. I don't know about a secret list, or considering the technology leaks today, just how secret this list would stay. But I did my research on the other two problems, and I found out more information that reinforces why I want you to consider organ donation. And if you have, and ruled it out, maybe listen to me and reconsider. What is organ donation? Organ donation is the act of giving one's own organ to a recipient in need. The donor may be living, but post-mortem donation is the most popular and most extensive way to donate. Post-mortem, or after-death donation, may include kidneys, pancreas, liver, heart, lungs, intestines, skin, cornea, and ligaments or tendons. There are even some transplant donations for veterans that have included double arm and double hand replacements. The most common among these donations are kidneys, with intestines being the least common. How are donations even established? UNOS, or United Network for Organ Sharing, has an internet list called UNET, which has every donor's name on it, and it's linked to every donor transplant hospital in America. This list is quite extensive as far as what it measures for in a match. The list matches for blood types, organ sizes, how sick the recipient is, how long they've been on the list, and distance between the donor and the patient are the main focal points in matching a donor to a recipient. This list isn't guarded by the rich or a pay your way to the top. This list doesn't see color or age or fame. It's as fair as Lady Justice which, coincidentally, leads to the fact that it's not only illegal, but a felony to buy an organ from an individual. Hospitals even require strict instructions on where organs are coming from and why. So if you bring your heart in a cooler, you're out of luck. And probably under arrest. You may be asking, but what about the questions your friend asked? Well, the American Heart Association states that in every instance of a transplant, policies are in place that the hospital must have two teams for the transplant to happen. The first team is usually hospital staff and are known as your medical team. Their job is to make sure that they're doing everything in their power to keep you alive. Sometimes they fail. Then, and only then, the transplant team is notified and they show up and remove what's needed. Wait, what's needed? Yes, they can take organs that have matches to other people locally, regionally, and even nationally. Even with the dire need of organs, few people are stripped, as they say, of their organs, and nothing's removed to the effect of your funeral viewings. If that part bothers you too much, though, you can even specify what you're allowing them to remove. If you just say, my kidneys and liver, they are legally bound to only remove the kidneys and liver. Any doctor found to have broken any transplant laws faces fines, revocation of their license, and even jail time. Donor organs are also screened for HIV, hepatitis, or acute aggressive cancer to name a few diseases. These pre-screens make them incredibly safe, so the risk of contracting a fatal disease from the organ is minimized to the recipient at all costs. one person can save the life of eight people. As of 2016, over 122,000 people were waiting for organs from UNOS. 
OregonDonor.org stated a person's added to the donor list every 12 minutes. Every 12 minutes. Life-saving organs are in dire need now more than ever. Your family will find comfort in a part of you living on. The recipient gets more time with their family. And most religions aren't opposed to it. So reconsider becoming an organ donor. Because the next life saved could be your own.